let h be a subgroup of g. We have to prove that if g is cyclic, then so is the quotient group g mod h. So proof. It's probably worth noting that the quotient group is actually a group in this problem. H is a subgroup, so we have that part. And G is cyclic, therefore G is abelian. And H is a subgroup, and so it's also abelian. Because it's abelian, it's normal. So H is actually normal in G, and so the quotient group actually makes sense. So this is a group because H is normal in G. So all we have to do is show it is cyclic. So we'll start by assuming that G is cyclic. So suppose G is cyclic with generator little g. So that means we can write G as the cyclic group generated by little g. And the claim is that the quotient group is also cyclic. So we need to come up with a generator for the quotient group. So the natural choice is to look at the cyclic group generated by the right coset HG. So take any right coset, say HX, in the quotient group. Then X is an element of G, which is generated by little g because it's cyclic. So there exists some integer, let's call it M, such that we can write X as little g to the M. So then we should be able to write HX as a power of hg. Let's try it. So then hx is equal to h little g to the m. And by definition of the multiplication in the quotient group, this is actually h little g times h little g times dot 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 times h little g, where we have m copies of this right coset. So this is actually hg to the m mth power. <laughs> it's hard to say it. And this is certainly in the cyclic group generated by hg. So we showed that if we took an element in the quotient group, it was also in this cyclic group. So that means that the quotient group is contained in this cyclic group. And the other inclusion is obvious. So the quotient group is equal to the cyclic group generated by HG. So G mod H is cyclic. And that's it.